Cringe Pony TV Season 2 Episode 4 is starting now. Kick back and relax because we have a whole slew of crazy cringe for you tonight. More MMO Cop and the One Punch Killer. We got Alcoholic Mike and Cannibal Dad and tons of surprises in store for all of you. So get those kids to bed, grab an adult beverage or 12, and prepare yourself for cringe like you've never experienced before. And remember that Cringe Pony TV is only possible because of your continued support to stay on the air. So use your super chat powers to get us to goal tonight for three extra cringes at the end of the episode. And without further ado, let the cringe begin. I don't know where the games are going, but I sure know what games have been. Hanging on the MMOs in cringe of yesterday, and I made up my mind. I am gonna cast blind, here I go again. Here I go on Thorn Blade. Though I keep searching for a new home, I never seem to find what I'm looking for. Oh Lord, I pray you give me strength to carry on. Cause I know what it means to wait alone. For free out the streams Here I go again on Thorn Blade Going down the only EQ I've ever known Like a group me I wasn't born to group alone And I made up my mind I am going to cast blind just another pally in need of a fort Waiting on chat, sweet charity And I'm gonna stream on for the rest of my days Cause I know what it means To wait alone for free out the streams Here I go again on Thorn Blade Going down the only EQ I've ever known Like a groupie I wasn't born to group alone And I made up my mind I am going to get blind Here I go
Cause I know what it means To wait along for free out the streams Here I go again on Thorn Blade Going down the only few I've ever known Like a groupie I wasn't born to group alone And I made up my mind I am going to get blind Having hair this good is easy? It is definitely not. Only with Magic Move Hair Product can I possibly provide you with such intricate high definition hair. Magic Move is 100% approved by me, David Schlo. Every time I move my hair is magic. If you want hair just like mine, I would like to announce the partnership between the Nathan Napalm and Magic Move. Now on the Napalm Loot Store. Ronix Magic Move Essential Hair Kit. Get yours today. Or just have boring hair. The choice is yours. Cringe Pony TV is completely funded by you. Please consider using your super chat by clicking the money sign icon in chat and dropping a few bucks to help fund future episodes. If we hit gold tonight, there will be three bonus cringes at the end of the episode. So please consider donating to this show tonight with Super Chat or by joining the channel. And remember, every dollar feeds a puppet for a day. Thank you for keeping Cringe Pony on the air. I need something really good to wear. I just don't have anything that's really cringe-worthy. What to wear, what to wear. Hey you, your cringe gear is very low. What should I do about it though? There's no stores around here sell any cringe gear. You mean there used to not be? Introducing the Napalm Loot Store, filled with cringe-tastic new gear to satiate your cringe. Enjoy the new Plant Man shirt and mug, the MMO Cop shirt and mug, and even a classic old Cringe Pony TV logo shirt and mug. This is fantastic! The only cringe you can wear on your body. All your body is made of cringe. On sale now on Teespring. Seriously, it really is. Go check it out after the show. Last time on MMO Cop, the commissioner gave MMO Cop his new partner, which just happened to be his brother, the One Punch Killer. The MMO Cop thought he had died during the WoW Killer Clone Wars. Together, they went for Gamago, the largest defender of the MMO genre. But the One Punch Killer sacrificed himself to stop an onslaught from a Gamago helicopter. MMO Cop burst into Gamago headquarters and was kicking butt when suddenly a Gamago Gamago mech emerged. Meanwhile, from the wreckage of the Gamago helicopter, the One Punch Killer has survived and is still alive. And now, the legendary adventures of MMO Cop to continue. MMO Cop, prepare for termination. Protocol activating. Why? 
I'm not gonna make it. Stand back, brother. I got this. One punch. Attack! <laughs> What? Punch deflector has been activated. You cannot win. Some kind of deflector. You know how to bring down that punch shield, right, MMO Cap? I know exactly what to do. Thanks to working together. Teamwork, just like the old days. Fools! You think just because you have defeated my mech that you're somehow powerful? <laughs> I am Mr. Gamego. I rule this Gamego empire. <laughs> and you will pay. You will pay. Albatross, come to me now. Mighty Albatross, fly me away from here, and I activate the first guardian of Gamego, the Red Pony. <laughs> Have fun, MMO Cop. I can't just let him get away, brother. Don't be reckless, brother. We do this together. I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> Enough with you! <laughs> no! Brother! I can't lose you for a third time! No! <laughs> so, you are the MMO cop I've heard about. I am the Red Pony, one of the four guardians of Gamago. Prepare to feel my wrath! <laughs> choke him, Emo Cop! Choke on the glory of Gamago's empire! Can the MMO Cup survive against the first of the four guardians of Gamago? The Red Pony looks like a mighty foe, perhaps wielding magic. And with the untimely third demise of his brother, the One Punch Killer, it looks like it is all up to the MMO Cop this time. Can he save the MMO genre from the evil clutches of Gamago? And what of Mr. Gamago? What role does he play in the future of the series? Find out next week on MMO Cop right here on Cringe Pony TV.
Pony TV is completely funded by you. Please consider using your super chat by clicking the money sign icon in chat and dropping a few bucks to help fund future episodes. If we hit gold tonight, there will be three bonus cringes at the end of the episode. So please consider donating to this show tonight with Super Chat or by joining the channel. And remember, every dollar feeds a puppet for a day. Thank you for keeping Cringe Pony on the air. just got my coffee ready. This should be perfect. I've been wanting to see this. Let me see what they got, see what they, you know, review for the year. The cave lighting that we've gotten in recently. So um, that's something that Kyle has been working on. And uh, as you all know, darkness and kind of the immersive nature of darkness and lighting and things like that is something we really want to lead into. Nathan? Nathan, don't you dare! Um, and now uh, Kyle has set the system up to where when you enter into a cave, based on how deep into the cave you go, the, the light is going to uh, get darker and darker. That was not a big deal. Stay calm until it's you're you know completely inside the cave and there's no light except for the light that you've brought in um torches or things like that so that's enough uh immersive and kind of creepy that caves can feel once you start moving into it Nathan, 
get out and stay out. This is ridiculous. I'm excited. People are allowed to be excited around here. Fine, I'll leave. Hype killer in here. Got a hype killer. It's ridiculous. Watch these grannies eat them burgers. I don't know why I like it so much, but oh man, it's a thrill. I love watching grannies eat burgers. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Grannies eating burgers. Grannies eating all those burgers. All these grannies eating burgers. All these burgers. Yo, these guys be letting cheese drop. Watch the lettuce block the mayo slot. Cut it in two. Let's go, chop, chop. I'm watching Granny's eat at the burger shop. Mm, this Granny needs to wipe her face. I saw all that ketchup stain her lace. She's slurping it up with a Granny type grace. She's eating that burger up in outer space. Granny's are driving me cray 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 I could watch him eat burgers all day She bit it too hard so the mustard did spray This Granny's got me on my knees ready to pay No don't leave Granny, I want you to stay Have another burger, I'm ready to play That one there is my great Auntie May She likes to pop her burger with brown gravy How much do you think that burger weighs? That Granny's dripping the cheese like four play Is the burger or the Granny be entree? They eat the best burgers at mid day Granny's eating burgers. Granny's eating all those burgers. All these grannies eating burgers. Granny's eating all these burgers. Yo, these grannies be loving the beef. Watching the shadows like a granny love thief. The way she smacks her whips is a motif. She likes like the cheese. Relief, mm, this granny just licked the plate I can still smell the burger she just ate She's asking for seconds but she has to wait Take time for Dodi to burger create So next time you're in a burger shop Stop and appreciate all those delicious grannies Eating delicious burgers Snapchat yesterday was a guy, but I guess that's why they say every girl is a guy, and the most just like every dot 
has to end Just like every paladin Sings his sad, sad chant Every girl is a guy MMO favorite track playing in the rave of life. I hear the guild leader say it's a game of easy come and easy go. But I wonder, does he know that all these girls are guys? And I know that you'd be right here now if I just wouldn't have known somehow. I guess every girl is a guy. If I get three hit, needs a hill. Just like every wizard swings his fire, fireball. Every girl is a guy, MMOs. So it's been a while now, I can still feel so much pain. Like something hard right in me bum And the scar And the scar remains in life you're driving down the street so subscribe to my channel <laughs> look at my she hulk knockoff whoa yeah check out my she hulk knockoff whoa yeah toilet tooth jerry doesn't think you're very good at making christmas cakes so take that or just subscribe to my channel. <laughs> hey, you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Come follow my channel so you can go on magical journeys with me. God is good, and I'm about to fix the camera. You can't see Domless. Oh no! Technical difficulties. It's like being a dead pony over here. Where did Domless go? He's somewhere. Did I mess everything up? Is your camera on? There, so on. Oh, that's it. on. I see you. I can see him. Oh, it's gonna be broke tonight. I'm in the middle somehow. All right. Taco Let's Bell see. fever. God is good. And I'm about to fix the camera. You can't well, see Well, that that's all right. All right. We'll get okay. this kick started anyway. Yeah. Nathan, God is good. I do agree. And with each new episode of Cringe Pony TV, brings us a week closer to the launch of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I am Daimlos. Uh, I am the host of the After Pony, After Cringe Pony, Beating a Dead Pony. I'm joined, as always, by. Uh, Steven from Steven's Magic Castle, who we just got a, a quick little jump, a jump of uh, content there. And Howdy, uh, folks. yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you there. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the star of the show, the 
the professor of progeny, the killer of cash shops, <laughs> the Nathan Napalm himself, still trying to be a professional streamer and get me on screen. It's looking great. It can just be cut off. It's fine. No, we got you. We got you. There we go. There we go. You got it. All right. So welcome, everybody. Uh, If you've not seen the uh, After Cringe show, uh, this show is uh, mostly, uh, well, hopefully mostly, your questions. Please tag me in the uh, chat if you have a question for Stephen or Nathan about tonight's episode or anything that they do in the week. We start out chatting about uh, tonight's episode and... uh, um, kind of some behind the scenes stuff of it. And then we go into uh, what's going on in the week and what MMO news and all sorts of crazy shit. So uh, please ask any question you'd like. You know, it can be kind of as off ball as you want, but uh, you know, we try to stay on topic. Although, you know, we tend to move to separate things like uh, fast food or mm. uh, what's our favorite Halloween candy or crazy shit like that. So uh, it can be pretty much on anything, but uh, all right, well, there, there's the opening. Yeah, this uh, is this is cringe pony <laughs> where dreams can come true. So you can ask yes. anything. <laughs> dreams come true on cringe pony TV. I tell you what, how do you feel about Ronick's um, uh, hair hair gel and uh, his whole kit? It's a whole hair kit. Oh, perfect starter, man. That <laughs> it's. I'm so glad that you are able to. It's kind of like uh, uh, South Park where you're able to really get into topics that are going on right this second. Yeah. And that was a stream that uh, someone in chat brought up that was just last Thursday. So yeah. uh, uh, such a great question. Uh, if, if you didn't hear, our friend Random Rob asked uh, about Ronick's uh, hair gel, uh, and it blew up. Uh, poor Ronick. He was just super embarrassed. And I know he's out there looking right now. I know you're out there. He didn't like that. He didn't Uh, like that. He did not like it. (laughs) You know, it puts him on the spot. You know, he's there to promote the game and he's not there to promote himself. Right. And so when I I totally understand, you know, that's not the point of that. So, but, you know, take a little spotlight, Ronick. We like your hair. We want your hair as a a thing in Pantheon, you know, that we can choose from your hairstyle. Uh, so <laughs> just just embrace it, my man. You have beautiful hair. You know, we, we all get older. We all start to lose it or turn gray, but enjoy it while you can, man. It's uh, it's it's luscious. So thank you. Uh, yeah, no, great, great. Uh, mm-hmm. Where did you get? Uh, how, how did you how was that inspired by you? And, and how did you get that done so quickly? Let's, let's well, start with that. well, mine is specifically asked me to do it. So I was like, OK. I have enough time to get that done, you know, um, and get that in cringe pony this Saturday. So what's funny about it, though, is that there's the watermarks all over his face because I didn't want to pay $50 a month for the true service of the <laughs> <laughs> to make a picture talk. Um, but but if if cringe pony continues to grow, uh, grow, then perhaps one day I can afford the $50 a month and I can do all kinds of crazy stuff with everybody's face and make it look like they're talking. Uh, Man, I didn't even notice that. To be yeah, honest. you go back and look. There's like watermarks all over him. I tried to make it as least obvious as possible, but um, it was uh, it, they definitely made it impossible to get rid of. Uh, but in yeah. that case, I'll say you did a good enough job. Yeah, nice. I thought it would be enough. the only thing people could notice. <laughs> and and well, that replaced if... the commercial that was supposed to be there because I actually already had Cringe Pony all lined up. So there was a commercial that in order to get Ronix in, I had to remove that one and move it to next week. Well, that's all right. I, you know, maybe if you've a uh, MMO cop stops ripping a bunch of t-shirts, we have the budget <laughs> to get uh, Ronix actual picture. Yeah. This time. After that shirt that I ripped, cause I did, I did those scenes kind of in order, right? Sort of, uh, I st- well, kind of, I still had like the final scenes to record and I ripped that shirt this morning and then I realized I didn't have any more shirts and it's the same shirt that one punch killer wears. So I had to get in my car, drive, and buy more another pack of shirts because I ripped the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Support Cringe Pony. Send t-shirts. Please send all your t-shirts. Yeah, life beaters. <laughs> and more. Oh, man. So, all right. So we got that. Uh, MM Cop was, is always good. I'm, I'm getting real sick of these uh, uh, cliffhangers that you leave me on, man. It's... Uh, <laughs> I, I just want it all. I, I can't wait to just binge it all in a row. We're going to need like a... Uh, uh, Extended... Yeah, exactly. We put it all together. Yep, yep, exactly where my brain's at, Steven. It's coming to VHS. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that would actually, I mean, I would, I'd buy it on VHS <laughs> immediately. <laughs> oh God, do, do, Does anybody still have a VCR? I do. I do somewhere. All right, I do too. I'm not going to lie. I, still I, got a small, I got a small collection of VHS tapes that I just think are cool to have on VHS. 
within Agreed. that collection is the first two Ninja Turtles movies. Excellent, excellent. But definitely not the third because that one not was in so bone. trash. I'm Although I own it on Blu-ray. Who the fuck am I kidding? I own the third one. What are we? <laughs> it was a triple pack. I got them all together. Right. Yeah, yeah I mean, man. I still have some great VHS tapes. There's a good question there um, in chat about does anyone use controllers for MMOs or only keyboard and mouse? Let's talk about that. Oh. You go I'm going to tell you right now. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, folks. There are two specific. Technically, I think that's three. If I was playing Final Fantasy XI, I would use a controller. Yep. Go but, three. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV, I use the controller. And the other MMO that I don't know if many people may not be familiar with or necessarily maybe even into this game, but another game I really like playing with the controller is uh, Tree of Savior. That mm. game is awesome with the controller. Mm. Okay. I've never even played that one. It, it, it's it's like a it's like a, it's like Ragnarok Online. It's like the spiritual spiritual successor to Ragnarok Online. Yeah, I, I agree, Final Fantasy XI, because their keyboard controls are really bad. Um, uh, it just was built for that. Um, Final Fantasy XIV, I, I did play on PS4, the controller, but then I started playing on PC and using keyboard and mouse. Now I can't go back. I tried to go back to control. I was like, no, 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 I can't do that now. Um, ESO, I played that one a lot on the PS4 and uh, definitely played that one with the controller. And that's it for me. Uh, everything else is, is keyboard and mouse. Oh, yeah, ESO, too. I forgot about that. What about you, Domless? Any controller action? For uh, you? I am old school. If it's on the <laughs> keyboard, if it's on the computer, I'm playing with a keyboard. I, I The controllers are for my consoles only. Well, interestingly enough, most of the games that we named off were built for consoles yeah. first. Yeah, that's why. That's why, yeah. So it makes sense that those games are feel so smooth with controllers. I guess if I played more action-based uh, MMOs, you know, mm -hmm. like where they're all kind of moving to this action system, you know, I'd certainly give it a go. I'm, I don't, I'm not against the controller, you know. I just type, you know, so I, I type a lot, so it needs. Yeah, to be yeah. No, that's actually the one thing I don't like. Uh, even though I really like playing Final Fantasy XIV with a controller, it's it's always annoying to have to set it down and then. Type stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like I even agree. on my P, even when I play it on the PS5, I have a, I have a wireless keyboard set up to my PS5 for that game. If you had to choose, what would you rather grease up by your fast food next to you or whatever, a keyboard or a controller? <laughs> I would rather my controller get greasy. It's easier to clean. You know, you can just wipe a controller down real easy. Keyboards, man, they're they're difficult. Uh, mine's Don't getting a ready. Now. I, I actually can't stand that to the degree I will not eat if I'm gaming. Mm, I, I, I do. When I was very young, much like that too. When I was younger, I would, and, and I would always be like, ugh, 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 ugh. But, yeah. I, I got to a point where I was like, that's so I'm just going to eat before and after or take a break or something because I hate getting my stuff all greased up. Yeah, and it's just, it's it doesn't matter. Controller or keyboard, I, I, I hate cleaning that shit. So I just... Try to be proactive, exactly like you, Stephen. Just try to wash my hands before I game. Or uh, made a, a rule long ago where if I'm gaming, I'm I'm probably not eating. Like mm. I'm, I'm no longer bringing dinner to the the keyboard anymore. I I kind of grew up, <laughs> up and now eat at a table rather than you know eating some ramen sloppily at my keyboard. <laughs> that makes me realize we should invent some kind of like hands free eating device for computer gamers. Yes, patent that like shit. Yes, <laughs> or like, or like, just like a like a, a little thing you slide over it that you can still use it when eating. It's like a bib. Uh, we could call it the keyboard mouse bib or the controller bib. Oh, and we could like make a thing where there's like a trough in front of you. That you just <laughs> it up hangs on your neck. Get down in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah it hangs on your neck, and it just, it just catches all the stuff, so you don't end up like <laughs> dropping food in your milk and stuff, like like it did to my yeah. life. Yeah, I got my game a note bag. Let me it's strap genius. my note bag on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how much drugs is used in, to, for the making of Crimson Pony? Actually, believe it or not, I don't do any drugs. Uh, I don't even hardly drink alcohol. I do on occasion for a delicious meal, um, and that's it. I, it's it's not necessary uh, for drugs to be that weird. <laughs> nope, it's true. But I do see You're high why on life, Nathan. I see why some people might want to enjoy maybe some kind of intoxication before watching though. I definitely would understand that. Yeah. Not required, but you know, 
enhancement is always a good time. It, and people are asking for a One Punch Killer to die every time. It does appear, it does appear to be going in that direction. It's pretty classic. I like how that was your all's idea, by the way, because I was going to do a new scene for him to show he survived. You guys were like, you should do the exact same scene. So I did. It's super important <laughs> that it's the exact same thing over and over again. <laughs> it just <laughs> crawls up out of the smoke. I'm coming for you, I'm brother. I'm glad you ran with that. <laughs> I, uh, just the inspiration after we, you know, close off the cameras. This That's just what we talk about off camera. And it's like, that just fits so perfectly to just, repeat the same thing over and over again that's so fucking funny to me it's about to show it in the it's about to show it in the recap little video down there but that that flying kick was probably i think the funniest part of the new mmo cup <laughs> over the nipple oh uh, i don't know lasers yeah. Are you kidding? N- never mind i forgot about the nipple lasers that was that was definitely the best that was definitely the best to get down Everyone the, needs a good nipple he had, ki- uh, laser. He had to <laughs> knock down the punch barrier so that one punch killer could get in there, but then it wasn't even necessary because he got him with a kick. It makes me wonder, if he'd have done the kick first, would it have worked because it was a punch deflector? I think I think he had to take down the shield first. <laughs> I think he had before, to, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, you tried to, he tried to punch and it didn't come through. Yeah, so, but, you know. but, then the, but then the robot called it a punch deflector. So oh, he didn't say that about a kicks. Kick yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Fair enough. Fair I don't enough. know. But they got the deflector done anyway. So we'll always wonder that one. That I will not be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, speaking of um, uh, new things that uh, and and that that are in your real life, uh, I need to hear how this. Uh, backwash story came to be. Oh, yeah. The very first. Yeah, so it's actually the opposite of what the video was. I actually do not drink after anybody. I haven't always been this way, but I've gotten worse. I never liked drinking after people. And then, like, as I get older and I know more about bacteria, etc., I actually won't drink after anybody. I won't drink after my wife. I won't drink after nobody. I just don't. It, if it's my drink, it belongs to me. And if I even think somebody did something, I won't drink it. Like, you know, one time I was at an airport, I got a coffee, and the lady that was across from me kept asking me if it was good, right? She kept asking me all these questions about the coffee, right? And then I had to go to the bathroom, I left my coffee, and I came back, and I just felt too weird, like maybe that lady snuck over there and got a sip, so I had to throw it away, I couldn't drink it. Uh, I, I'm, I just, I don't do it. And so that video was demonstrating, in a very obvious way, things that are actually are happening on a microscopic level that I'm aware of. But I just made it much more, I macroed it into a... Kind of like a PSA of sorts. Yes, it's a PSA. I just want people to know Mm -hmm. it's gross to drink after people, and that's why. I need some (laughs) single parents like, did you know that every time you take a drink... (laughs) Is that how you're going to start this season with, uh, uh, you know, PSAs? Every... Yeah, we got to have... how we start every cringe pony? Yeah, we got to have something educational to start it off with. I I think that... Perfect. I try to do it. It doesn't always work in my favor, but I try to organize it to where... The madness descends the deeper you go into cringe pony, right? So it starts out a little silly, or even educational silly, and then it just descends into madness. Um, and that's... yeah, by the end you got grannies choking back burgers. <laughs> exactly. You can't put that at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, I, I noticed it through, much later. Cringe through season much, much one. Later. Yeah, I watched it in season one. If I put too crazy a cringe at the beginning, the the people would leave, and I get more. Of those comments of people being like WTF YouTube, you know, uh, because they ended up <laughs> <laughs> randomly on. But if I descend people slowly into the madness, I can drag them down with me, and um, and they they're they're ready for the grannies eating burgers by the time it's time for that. Call that the cringe coaster. <laughs> the cringe coaster. Rising the up, rising coaster. up, and then full cringe, hardcore down to it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, and the return of one of my favorite mm. characters, old Cannibal Dad. I was about to mention that we got to talk about Cannibal Dad because that was a pretty, that was a pretty good uh, amount of information there. So here's what I want to ask you guys: There's two ways of interpreting something that happened in that episode. When Alcoholic Mike came out of the toilet after he puked him up, mm-hmm. he saw the dog and he called him Rugby. If you remember, yeah. that was the dog that he lost. Now, do you think that that really was Rugby? Or do you think that he's just drunk? What do you guys think? I personally think that he's just drunk. <laughs> okay. I, 
I somewhat agree with Steve. I thought it was more like a hallucination. Hallucination. Okay. So yeah. So he came out of the toilet. He's been in this, you know, stomach slash colon <laughs> for you know who knows how long. Probably you know certainly hasn't had food. And if it is food, it's people. So you know, not good. <laughs> right. Right. So if it does turn out to be his dog, then his own dog ate him. Yeah. And, and I and that would oh, mean that Cannibal Dab was the friend he had back in high school who took who stole his dog because that was a story that oh, he told. Oh yeah. Oh the well, fucking maybe that loop is the continues. Dog, then. Mm. I forgot about that part. And <laughs> and I thought about not gonna lie, I thought about showing at the end of that episode him in the stomach of the dog. <laughs> but I was like, okay, <laughs> all right, we can't just keep going with this forever. But I still might. But I still might. I still might. <laughs> Well, so the cannibalism <laughs> has spread to the dog. So does that mean uh, Winter and uh, uh, I can't? Why can't I think of it? Navi, your daughter's name. Navi, thank you. Uh, you are they going to start uh, cannibalizing things as well? I don't know. We're going to have to get deeper into the series to find oh, out what man. happens. Um, I will tell you this though: we haven't seen a lot of it on the show yet, but there's been some hints of it in the intro and things where he does try to get them. He tries to trick them to eat the humans, but they never fall for it. They're always like, no, 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 I'm not eating what you cook, Dad. Right. Um, You know, I'm starting to realize as the series goes on, the cannibal dad actually is kind of a piece of crap, dude. (laughs) Yeah, he's not a good guy. (laughs) He's messed up. Dead dead dad. He doesn't just eat humans. He does other screwed up stuff. Like what? (laughs) Like the whole thing with the dog and the cannibal... Or homeless Mike, or whatever his name is. Alcoholic Mike. Yeah, he possibly stole Dude, if that him. backstory is true, then what a scumbag. <laughs> he, stole, he stole that poor guy's dog, and that's what led him to drinking, was, you know, he lost yeah. his only friend. It's ruined his life. And then later on, it eats him. He eats Man. him. And then he comes back and eats him, yeah. yeah the cringe on. verse is in Mid- full I, effect I don't know if anybody remember. I wish I had, like, an instant replay button to hit this, but... <laughs> that scene where the where the cannibal dad comes to eat him is still hilarious. To me. <laughs> He's like comes up out of the streets like. <laughs> Some people thought that was scene was a little too much. I remember. Dude, I love that, one. <laughs> but I am a little a little off. I'm a little off. I'm, a little off. I'm kind of weird. Uh, I think that's something that we all have in common. If we're coming together at midnight to watch this show, <laughs> we're one of the things all that a little off, my friend. <laughs> I, I've always had. I think I've always been having trouble succeeding in the past because uh, I'm like the guy who who wants people to come in and be like, "What the f, YouTube?" Because then I'm like, <laughs> I, "I did it." Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. That's I like plan. it when that happens too because it's hilarious. It's hilarious for but some not random. Not good for business. I like to call that. I like to call people that don't understand the humor uh, normies. You know, there's people who are just too normal. They can't. Yeah. They can't even like imagine a world where a a cannibal gets the police called on them and then the musical is sung and then uh, the cop gives them a break, right? Like, there's just a certain amount, there's just a certain apparently 26 people in the world currently that can handle those types of things. <laughs> and we love all 26 of you motherfuckers. We do, you're all Thank you so much. You're all crazy. We appreciate you being over here. We appreciate you supporting Nathan's <laughs> t-shirt ripping ripping habit uh <laughs> please and, please go like and subscribe here st- at steven's channel yes you know a lot of really fun cringe content uh coming your way all the time which is just wonderful appreciate you nathan appreciate you steven thank you so uh another one of my favorite ones that i really wanted to bring up is the uh the parting the veil uh, and the, the excitement and the, the hype killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that we can poke fun at our own community. We, uh, you, you're right. We are a little, you know, overhyped. You know, listening as as the tre- treasurer of Joppa Fangirl Club. You know, every word that he says is just like, hoo, 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 hoo. so I yes, that that is us. We are overhyped, and and sorry. You know, if we if we are too much hype for you and, you know, you think this game is never going to come out, but uh, we love it and we love making fun of ourselves, too. We get it. Yeah. We're crazy. Yeah. But we're crazy for this game and we, we need a home and we need it to come out now. So that's why we're a little crazy about it. Yeah. Speaking of homes, Nathan, Uh-oh. perfect transition. Uh-oh. 
coming home. That's right, baby. Thorn Nathan's blade. coming home, baby. I'm back on Thornblade. <laughs> I had our first session with the 200% XP plus the lesson at, for 30 minutes. We made it to level 24, I think, if I remember right, um, with brand That's new killer. fresh characters. Um, I do not like Glooming Deep, and it's not that Glooming Deep is bad. Glooming Deep is a great introduction dungeon uh, for brand new players. I just don't like it because I've done it, and it's it doesn't feel like EverQuest to me. It feels like World of Warcraft or something. I just it sets the expectations on the wrong direction for what I actually want to do in EverQuest, which is just go to cool places and kill stuff, right? Fair enough. But Fair enough. it is really good for new players because literally it tells you how to do everything uh, if you do all the it quests. It hits everything. And it gives you really good gear. It also does that, yes. Uh, sorry, Stephen, feel free to take a nap in this part. I'm going to talk forever. Uh, so I, I agree with you, Nathan. It is... You know, when you're coming from P99 or something like that, it is definitely uh, a very drastic turn. But uh, one thing that uh, you're going to find out here pretty quickly if you stick around is that that's the way the game has gone. Uh, it is it, there is still certainly camping and but not really as much. It is a lot of going to places where you instant zone in uh, and and do a, a group task together. And you've got a, a thing to... <laughs> Steven's actually leaving. That's fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, no. Say, say, go get your drink. It's just funny. He's all like, all right. right. So, I've had enough yeah, of I'm this. Out. I'm Fuck out. this thorn blade <laughs> shit. I'm out. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway. So, but that's using that quest window. Now, it won't be as blown up. You will not have 79 tasks all at one time. You will have one task. You will. It'll have different things in that you will click on. But other than that, but that's how you how you get all the new content stuff. So like Dragons and Wrath and these Depths of Dark Hollows, it's all through that quest window now. And so uh, interesting. Uh, we're, we're gonna enjoy Lucklin, enjoy Lucklin, enjoy Yakisha, all those new zones for the newbies. But once we get to a little higher level content, I'm gonna introduce you to some questing, and it's gonna be exciting. Yeah, I'm ready for it because I've never done anything like that in this game ever. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, so yep. it'll be it'll be brand new content. And obviously, I'm not adverse to doing content like that. I just leveled to 80 in World of Warcraft Classic, so I can handle it. It'll be cool. It'll be, it'll be cool in a way to see how EverQuest does things like that. Because especially if it's not, that's the only thing I hate is when you have like your whole quest log filled with crap, and you don't even yep. know what you're doing. You're just doing all kinds of random things just to get the like XP. vanguard like oh vanguard was bad about it too it really was oh my god i can't keep that shit straight yeah it's wild it's too much it's too much it is too much i it's, just it, when i play vanguard i just i just ran off and just started killing stuff i was like i'm not doing i'm not doing all that for sure for sure well usually you're just on one task and it's not bad and it just it tells you what to do like as long as you can read that one little task in the window you know exactly what you're doing when where you're headed so I love you, Stephen. Thank you so much. <laughs> Steve is eating a, um, a delicious brownie, it looks like. Homemade from scratch. Mm. Is it a it's magical a... castle brownie? <laughs> no, it, it's, it's a, it, no it's, it's a regular old brownie, but it does have caramel and walnuts in it. Ah, oh, walnuts shit. are great in brownies. Yeah, I decided to, to try my hand at baking the other day, so I made something simple. Mm. <laughs> Favorite uh, topping on a brownie? Oh man, I don't usually put toppings on brownie. Vanilla ice cream, though, hmm. always a good choice. I don't eat brownies, actually. I usually don't either. I don't even like them, but I was like, I'm gonna make some. <laughs> no brownies. I, I need to go yeah. give them all away. I, I don't eat chocolate, actually. Oh really? Yeah, I it's I I say I'm allergic, but that's a lie. I just I found <laughs> out my migraines went away when I quit eating chocolate. So I quit. Oh, so well, I quit eating chocolate. That's still a good excuse. You can still <laughs> tell people that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's easier just to tell people I'm allergic, but I'm not actually. I just it's an easier way when people are like, "You want this?" I'm like, "Nah, I'm allergic to chocolate." But I'm not actually. It's not actually. Um, but I haven't had a migraine since I quit eating it, and that was when I was young. So um, no more, no more chocolate. Breaking cringe news. Yes. If, if Nathan has lied to you for all these years, he's not allergic. Yes, yes, breaking news. Sometimes you know, I'm, I'm not really that big in the chocolate myself. It doesn't make me have migraines or anything, but if it's like, if it doesn't have peanut butter paired with it, I'm usually out. 
I am definitely a nuts in the brownie must happen sort of guy. Like, oh yeah. I'm, I don't want to do a brownie unless it's got some sort of nuts or caramel or, you know, because you can say it both ways. We found out two weeks ago, caramel or caramel. It's the, it's the caramel. same word. Caramel. Caramel. <laughs> caramel. Caramel. All right. So another thing I wanted to mention, Nathan, uh, do you even ever quest, bro? You don't know how to put an aug in your sword? Bro. Dude, I've never done that before. Bro. I've never done that before in my life, actually. That, I mean, that I was. Did I finally. On. I can't remember if I finally figured no, that out. No, you never did. I did it. I watched it. So listen, I was... listen, when I get aggravated, I'm just like, I'm not doing that. I'll, I'll survive. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I think that's what happened. I, I was trying to oh, do it. So and, funny. And I couldn't get it to do it. And I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I mean, not that it was the end of the world, you know, it was just a little Bane damage on some cobbles, but, you know, whatever. It's still funny. I can't believe you could. It just, it lights up. You you click on it, it lights up, and it goes in. It's it's so easy. Yeah, I'll teach I don't it. Know. Don't worry. I don't know why I didn't There's work. plenty of augs. I don't know what I was plenty doing. Plenty to go wrong. around. I had a step missing there or something. <laughs> couldn't get it to work, dude. I couldn't get it to go on. It's all good. It's all good. I will teach you. It's, it's super easy. Uh, the next next misnomer was the <laughs> auto grant of AAs. So here's how this works. Okay. Uh, all you have to do is have that button clicked. And once you hit 51, because we are in Depths of Dark Hallow, okay. all of Lucklin. It's not a pick what you want from Lucklin. It's not 50 or 100. It is literally all... 300 and whatever AAs are in Lucklin, okay. you get auto granted because it wants you to catch up, right? So you have players like me who have, uh, at this point, you know, somewhere between 1250 and 1500 AAs. Right. Well, there's no way you can catch up to that without getting granted, you know, a fifth of those. So you get all the AAs from Lucklin as soon as you hit 51. You don't have to pick or choose anything, you just get it. So you have to go in and, and grab them all, but that's pretty easy. And then in February, when we hit the next level ex increase to 75, you will get all the Planes of Power ones as well. Right. So if, you know, as we get closer to that time uh, and you're 51, don't pick any of those if you can help it because you're just going to be auto granted them. So that's how uh -huh. that works. You'll get them all. It's great. That It's just the, the process of how to catch up. Just like Gloom and Haven, right? That's, that's how you catch up. You get all this good armor. It lasts all the way till you're 50. And then same thing with A's. Here's another chunk of what you've missed for the last year, right? So well, that's, that's how that works. Well, that's good. Yeah. 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 Totally good. Yeah. And, I turned mine on immediately. Ones. I turned mine on immediately. Good. good. Yeah. When you have everybody, make sure that's clicked. And that's like one of the, the shady things that EverQuest, like this is in the community too. Like everyone thinks EverQuest is super shady because they don't tell you to click that auto grant button. It's super crazy. It's just this little tiny button and you're in the corner of your A's. And if you don't click it, you don't get it. Mm. So it's it's a little shady. Okay. So just click it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Heard that. What? A, why didn't Why didn't they just make that automatic? I wonder. It should just be clicked automatically. I feel like. Yeah. Well, listen, I, if you want a game where stuff just gets done automatically for you, why don't you go <laughs> play a game where you play as a little mage. Go play a magician <laughs> on World of Warcraft, and that will just do everything for you. No, no, I did have somebody while playing Ember said that to me at one point. Like, why don't you just go play a mage? And I was like, oh, oh sweet. perfect, oh, sweet, that's awesome. <laughs> just go take your pet attack button and go AFK for the next 20 minutes and set up your little mouse clicking bot thing and <laughs> put your pet in and go farm blue diamonds like a mage. <laughs> Indeed. Sorry. Sorry, mages. You're not that bad. You're just really boring. Just go play mage. <laughs> Sorry, Sparrow. I know you're really excited about Magician. But, yeah, she uh, is. She is. She's very oof. excited about it. That's a boring class. Is That's it? That's a real boring class. A lot of people who like it, though. Well, you know, you kind of turn into... Uh, the other thing you do in raids is is buff bot. Like, because you're the one that makes the mod rods, and you're the one that makes mm. all the toys for the pets. Like, you get little weapons that you give pets eventually. And uh, so... Yeah, and then you do a little bit of damage, but, you know, with mages, their thing was always rains and AoEs, right? Like, they always were really good at those, and, and when you're raiding, it just isn't something that you can always do too terribly often without getting yourself killed a whole bunch of times. So, you kind of turn into pet attack guy, 
pet buff guy, raid buff guy, and that's that's about it. Sorry. But okay. if you're in a group, different story. AoE away. It's great. Yeah, and she, she prob- likely will be playing mostly in a group when she plays, because it'll mostly be on her Fridays, I think. For sure, for sure. We've we've got some things that we'll be able to do, like little two group things that uh, you know we're we're raid content, but okay. Uh, like I said, the gear drops like wine; there flows like wine. So uh, it's you're going to be ready to take on raid stuff with us, where we do two groups and blast through what you know used to take seven groups to do. Mm. It's crazy that'd when you fun. get good gear. Yeah, that'd and be you fun. dominate this game. It's a different way of playing EverQuest, and it's a lot of fun. Okay. I'm looking Come forward to, to it. Blade. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and if other want to play with us, we have a pretty good. Uh, we already have a community. I need to be invited to the guild, but we already have a guild. We we've got a community that plays. Um, and, uh, you know the I think the most enticing part about it is is it's a good way to quickly see and work your way through content that most likely you didn't see because I know that you quit playing during Planes of Power. Uh, I know that you did. I'm on to you. And yes. this gives you an opportunity to come in and play all this content that made sense then. Now, I will say, uh, uh, as far as the community goes, Thornblade is very much like a private server. Uh, finding someone to go from 1 to, mm. let's say, 46 with you could be tough. Uh, it's just because everyone has been playing for the last year and a half, year and, and we're all 70. Yeah. It's, it's exactly what's going on with live. It's the same shit, right? But then they do things like this where... You know, from the 8th to the 15th, it's literally triple experience. And if you pay a dollar for a fucking XP pot for the next four hours, uh, you're going to get a lot of levels and really quickly. to be honest, you don't have to spend a dollar because you're already subscribed. Therefore, you're going to get some points as long as you claim them. And you can use those yep. points to buy yourself some pots and you're good to go. Yep. And do the three thing. It, it, when you claim the, claim the points, it asks you, do you want to buy three heirloom pots? And that's definitely the way you want to go because you get one for free, and you can trade them between all the characters on your, on that on that account. Anything that says heirloom, you can take through the the shared bank no, okay. and do it on any person, no matter where you claim it. So nice, uh, yeah. So you can tra- transfer some of those to your paladin, or you can, you know, whatever. <laughs> now, now that we got everybody all juiced up with EverQuest, everybody on my channel loves to hear about. Now let's talk about something nobody on my channel likes to talk about. Oh, me. Shit. Pokemon. Six more days, baby. Six more days. Six, Six more, more days. days. I'm pumped about it. Yeah. Yeah, I can't me wait, too. Man. I, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Five more days because it's past midnight. Oh, buddy. Five oh, more days. Not wait. So sweet, dude. I can't wait to call in sick because I got the Pokemon Scarlet Fever. <laughs> Scarlet Violet Fever? Yeah, Scarlet Violet <laughs> Fever. That's right. <laughs> yeah, man. I can't wait for this gimmick. Uh, this this game's gimmick, as they like to call it in the in the community, um, no more Dynamaxing, Gigantamaxing, yeah. no more uh, 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 what was the other one? The Max Evolution, right, yeah. right. So this time we're getting uh, different typing. So like we're gonna just be able to change it all around by uh, you know a, a Pikachu. That you, they they showed that one where the he has the balloons on, so he turns into flying type. Pokemon, and so he can use flying type moves and get that uh, type advantage bonus damage. So, uh, well, I didn't gonna, realize they were doing stuff yep. like that. Oh, it's going to be crazy, dude! Cool. So you're going to find. I tried actually not to look at, at much at all of it because I sort of wanted to just experience it fresh, like a a, a horse flavored pizza fresh out of the yep. stone brick. So <laughs> just like finding shinies in the wild, you know, where you see they have a little glow to them. Yeah. These different Pokemon are going to yeah. have a different sound to them. Yeah. And you're going to be able to find them in the wild. And so you'll be able to find the, the regular Pikachu, right? The electric type Pikachu. But you're going to also be able to find this electric type Pikachu that when you turn on the gimmick, then you are a, a different type. And you can use That's that type cool. advantage on us. Yeah, it's going to be very cool. It's going to be very cool. Now, Crystals. Mm, now, first I, I, shiny I ever caught, I didn't know what they were yet back then. I was like, whoa, what's this? So cool. Dude, me and Steve used to play the one on the DS and rip off little children. Because we knew <laughs> we knew that they liked Pokemon or Pikachu because they watched a cartoon or whatever and they didn't understand the value of some of their Pokemon. Dude, I traded a shiny Dialga back when that was the newest Pokemon game on the on the DS. Um, I, sh- I traded a, sh- a, a regular old Pikachu 
for a shiny Dialga. A legit one. Oh, man. A legit one. Yeah, it wasn't even a hack. We used to rip them little kids off. we just go farm Pikachus and then, and then ask for whatever we wanted. But, you know, that was that was 20 years ago. Community matters, everybody. Oh, yeah. It doesn't work anymore. That don't work no more, yeah. People have educated their children now because those children, that was so long ago, they've grown up and remember it's getting ripped of off. And, yeah, and they're telling their children, like, don't don't you dare. That's a, that's a rare. You don't trade that right, for look, a Pikachu. You can get a I Pikachu know, anywhere. I know Pikachu is cool, okay? But <laughs> just don't go trading anything for one. <laughs> He is pretty fucking cool. Don't make the mistake I did. I have one shiny Dialga and some jerk tried to be a regular Pikachu. He wasn't even sort of Pikachu. Pikachu is probably one of my favorite Pokemon. I, I, he's just too iconic, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I but, always like to have a Pikachu in, yeah. my, in my main party. I always get him. It's not <laughs> an MMO, MMO, Christopher. I don't let him evolve. It's not an MMO, the new one. However, it has many new multiplayer mechanics that we've wanted for a really long time. Um, so it's moving closer in that direction. I'm still holding out that there'll be areas we go to in the game where random people will be there and it will feel sometimes, kind of, if you squint your eyes and use your magical Im- imagination, kind of like an MMO. I'm still hoping for it. <laughs> Dude, you still Cyber Nomad's... Charmander when he was eight. <laughs> it was me. It was me. How dare you? No, I, I, you know, I do love Charmander. Um, but I I'm like not, Charmander, too. I've not, I've not had him very many times in my life. I'm, but. you know, I'm predispositioned to pick the fire type me too. at the beginning of the game, but this time I don't think I'm going to. I'm not, I already know I'm which not, way I'm going. I'm not liking these starters, I gotta admit. What? Yeah, uh, me too. Get out. I like the very, like, I don't know, man. I feel like they got a little too, like... Look too, anime ass. Yeah, a little too cutesy. You know, like they they've oh, always, they always start they've cutesy. always been cute, but they they, I mean, yeah. they kinda turned into that it was like they started cute but then they would slowly evolve into being like a, a real badass, you know, like Charmander. Oh yeah. Exactly uh, like Charmander. They're all gonna turn into badasses, don't worry. I don't, don't know. Worry. Man, I really, I'm worried. In the last one I really liked the score bunny. I was down with that. Score bunny. The fire one this time looks like such a doofus. I can't bring yeah. myself I think I'm going with the Dude, I think I'm going with the cat one, the the grass type. That's, I, what, I'm going I, with. That's well. what I want. I like grass types. Uh, I like fire types. I like grass types. I definitely want, want that stupid looking duck. Mm. Yeah, the it's little they all three duck. don't look that great. I don't think. Yeah, I mean. I'm going for sprig- sprigatito. I think is what it's called. Is that what you're yep. doing too, Dimeless? Yep, grass so cat. When, when we I'm party together, guy. we're gonna all have the same starter. Well, we're gonna I mean, be a little grassy. <laughs> I, we're gonna have. I, how long do you keep on to that first Pokemon, dude? I mean, I, maybe the first couple weeks. I don't know, man. I, I, sometimes when I like them, I keep them forever. Like um, I always keep my starter to the end because I feel like that it, it it's a part of the story for me. Well, it's never the right. Uh, I don't know how deep you guys get into this shit, but I like I I if I lived in the Pokemon world, uh-huh. and I've thought about this for a long time. Okay, if I lived in the Pokemon world, I would be a breeder. I love breeding Pokemon, putting the right move type with the right EVs and training them up that way. Or yeah. now we've got it easy. We're feeding them vitamins to get those things up. That's they have streamlined the the breeding process completely. I remember riding on, on my fucking bike for days, days to get the right combination of you know the their extra ability plus the egg move plus you know the right EVs to start off with too. It's it's. That shit's gone, which I'm thankful for. Thank you for Nintendo for giving me back 300 hours every Pokemon game that I play now. Yeah. But yeah, yeah so that shit's important. So yeah, the starter doesn't have the right type. It's never the right type. It's It doesn't have the right moves. I, it goes away. I've got other better Pokemon to go. <laughs> Even though I can definitely understand that for some reason, just the weird role play game person in me is like this one. This was my first Pokemon in the game. It has to stick with me till the end. It'd yeah. be like for me if Ash was like, "Yeah, screw Pikachu. Let's get rid of him." Yeah, I'm kind of like that too. I could at least beat the game with them, you know. Yeah, that's my that's my OG. It. That's my OG. But I don't know. This time maybe not because I don't know if I'll beat the game. Sure. Yeah, that's but you what beat I the meant. game in a week. Yeah. Two yeah, weeks little, later, that little kid it's gone. So cute, though. It is cute. You are right, and I I am a, a cat daddy myself. So like the fact that Grass Cat was coming up, it was. It was a no-brainer for me. 
I hope yeah, he I hope he turns into a type. massive mm. lion type though, like majestic. Yeah, who knows? I have no idea what it's yeah, going to turn into. it's been really it's been leaked, it. but I haven't looked. Yeah, you can go spoil it if you want to see it, but it's it's all I, out there. The day it launches, I will spoil it because I need to know what they turn out like before I make my decision. I mean, you get all three. Yeah, like that's that's another thing they have eased up on that. You oh, don't really? You can just, get them all. Eventually, you will be able to get them all. They're so, easier like, to find in the wild. Is that what you're saying? The other starters, both. The, the it'll both easier find in the wild and also they usually have some sort of giveaway so like at the end of arceus mm, right. uh yep. you whatever one you picked you went and talked to the that professor and he at the end of the game he gave you the two other that's ones. right i forgot about so, that yeah you're right yeah so they've made it a lot easier to get all the starters so you don't have to trade with other people and because no one's giving that shit away and breeding takes a while right at the beginning so you know it is what it is <laughs> yeah man You'll get them listen i i want to say one more thing before we move subjects um, if you don't like Pokemon, then just go play Mage, because Pokemon is yeah. awesome. <laughs> and if you like trading card games and you don't like Pokemon, then I, you're a liar. You're a liar. That's what you. I mean, I'm gonna tell you right now. If if you don't like Pokemon, but you actually do like JRPGs, then I don't know what's wrong with you. Yeah, I that's agree. essentially what it is. It is. It's a JRPG uh, that has a really addictive. Um, Cause here's the deal. It's not like just cause you just cause like Steve goes out and he finds a Charmander. Okay, I go out and I find a Charmander. Dimos goes out and find a Charmander. Most likely, unless you know RNG, they're all gonna have different attitudes. They're gonna level up a little differently. Uh, there's tons of decisions on what kind of moves they're gonna get and which ones you're gonna keep. Uh, so our Charmanders are actually going to be totally different, even though mm -hmm. we all three got the same one from the same place. That's and they why can even Pokemon have different is names. So cool. And we can name them different names as well. That's why Pokemon's cool, because you literally go get them, and then if you're like, you know what, I don't like, I don't like the attitude of this one, or I don't like its personality, <laughs> keep farming for another one till you get the one you want, or breed it, um, and uh, then you level it up, and you pick the moves that you want it to have as a limited action set. You decide what it has, and then you go battle. And you battle real people. And um, one thing I wish they would do is a hardcore mode. Like, hey, if you lose, I get to keep one of your Pokemon. Oof. No, man. Nah. Yeah, dude. This is not PvP. No, this want, is not PvP I want, Pokemon. I want full loot Pokemon. <laughs> I mean, uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't have to participate in it, but I no. do think that would actually be cool. Like yeah. a high stakes Pokemon. A high stakes Pokemon battle. for the gambler. We're enemy. battling for pinks, dude. You know how pink slip Pokemon <laughs> battles. You know how nerve wracking that would be, dude. If you got like your best Pokemon in there because you want to win, you can't just bring your crap. Or you're not gonna win. Yeah. Dude. And and then somebody takes it, dude. Oh, that'd be no awful. Way. Devastating. Dude. No way. Devastating. No way. You they take my Relicanth and I am <laughs> flipping shit. There would probably be people that like did self-harm in real life over that. So it's yeah, probably that. that might be why. That might be why. Well, now that I mean, the viewership has dropped. Some of those classic EverQuest stories back in the day. Yeah. It's a great idea, though. Really great idea. Yeah. But I'm not pvp in my Pokemon away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else we got? We got uh, doing some WoW. You did your first raid this week. Oh, yeah, yeah. It went, How did that go for you? It went good. We um, we went in blind. We had a couple of people that knew the fights, but they, they didn't say nothing. They let us just be idiots and figure it out. We The first boss was just tank and spank, basically. He had, you know, typical, he had, he had ads. And then at the end, we had to realize the ads aren't going to stop coming, just burn the boss. Pretty typical. Second boss had mechanics. Uh, we had to figure it out. We had to figure out, like, hey, it goes in from doorway to the right, and then from that way back to this way, and when he resets, uh, it starts over. It doesn't just continue where it left off. Um, so I think I think we died three times, and then by the... I, might, I think I'm right. And then on the fourth time, we, we finally beat him, and that was pretty much our raid night. So we got through two bosses. Um, there's 16, apparently, though in that wow. raid so uh we got plenty of learning to do sounds like uh you really needed more dots more we did dots. need more dots we did we certainly do we need more dots <laughs> so we got that we got embers of drift still going i know you're staying up late playing a bunch of that all the time trying to level up yeah still having fun how's your urine sampling it's getting better because people <laughs> are beginning to learn about my my um need of urine and uh, people being began saving it for me so i'm i've been doing pretty good 
That's so kind of them. I know. That's that's uh, that's the best part of streaming is that people, you know, they come to your rescue. You know, they bring you urine in your time of need, and um, it's awesome. I don't know uh, if uh, it's gotten to you yet, but I also sent you a package this week of my urine. So oh, in the mail? Out, yep, in yeah. the USPS. That's coming your way. I did so. get that package. Um, oh, good, good. But I hadn't opened it yet, so um, I will, I'll I'll be enjoying that tonight. There are two <laughs> special vials in there that are just strictly morning piss. You know that oh, uh, really the, the really yellow. stout, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the good good. That's you the, save those for the raid, raid monsters it, that you encounter. It, it marinated in the bladder a while, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you sick fucks. <laughs> Did you get any asparagus? No, 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 no asparagus. No, no, no. You don't do asparagus. Uh, sometimes, if it's usually, it has to be wrapped in bacon, though. Yeah, I love <laughs> That's asparagus, a good way to do it. dude. I, uh, I'll eat asparagus raw. I will too. Oh no, I've never tried Gross. it raw. I just learned that it's people. It's good did raw. That. Yeah, I've never tried it. I probably would like it though. Asparagus. Sure. If I have a steak, I better have some asparagus. It just it, it's. I like the so I like. Here's something we need to know. Well, how do you like your steak? I like mine rare, oh, shit. bloody. Yeah. And let my let all my sides just soak in the blood. I used to not want my sides to soak in the blood, but I've gotten more carnivorous over the years. Um, <laughs> cannibal Dad. Yeah, Cannibal Dad. I like all those juicy beef blood soaked on my asparagus, my baked potato. Bro, I live in Nebraska. Steak is what we do. That's what we do You're better rare? than anybody. You're a rare guy then, right? Uh, I prefer, I always, <laughs> I get real, uh, you know, cocky with it. And I say, I want it. As rare as medium rare can be. Mm, yeah. That's where I want medium it. Medium rare. I think that's what you like. Yeah, I, I as like rare mine, as medium rare. I like mine like I like mine like it's somewhere between medium and medium rare. That's how I like mine. Yep. I think that's that's the classic play. If I meet someone that says that they want it well done, we instantly are now no longer friends yeah. that's a yeah that's a problem for me that is a and i'm, I'm really breaker. hardcore like that about the people who like boneless wings yeah so what's up know. with that they're not even wings it's made out of i know they're not wings meat. it's like little chi <laughs> it's like little chi it's like popcorn chicken is what it's yeah like. i don't understand a grown adult preferring oh my god boneless wings i i, I, mean... I understand children i understand that and, yeah. and you know what? I, I, I'm, I'm. This is. Uh, I know. I don't know if anybody on here watches anything on the First We Feast channel, but they're the channel that does hot ones. And uh, when they when they brought hot ones products to the grocery stores, and it was all boneless wings, I was like, "Really? What? You guys don't even eat boneless wings on the show? It's a hot wing show. Like, come on." It's got to be boneless, boneless wings. Yeah, bullshit. boneless wings. Get out of here with that nonsense. I mean, I, I totally agree. Now, I'm not going to say that if somebody didn't serve me boneless wings, I wouldn't eat them. All I'm saying is if I have the option, I will definitely pick bone in. Okay? And naked, and too. I, naked, bone dude, in. Dude, and I'm not going to lie, dude. If they serve me boneless wings, I'm not saying I won't eat them, but I am going to say a comment to them about calling them wings. <laughs> yeah. You so, should just like, call them chicken. What did you chicken, say this was? Just call them chicken. Hey, I got some chicken strips. Or chicken nuggets flavored. That's what they are. They're chicken nuggets oh, flavored. I have got a fucking video for you boys to watch. So here in Nebraska, a dude went to a city council and asked for three minutes of time and goes off on about boneless chicken wings and how we are teaching our youth mm. how terrible these things are or we're not teaching them how bad these things are and so they're not they're not wings and he ends up calling them saucy nugs so that's that's what we all call them like that. Here, saucy nugs. that's more truthful and i want to say something else about it before we move subjects here's another, another food type have you guys noticed that younger people you'll look over at they'll be eating bone in you know real wings and you look over and you're like dang dude like you left half the meat on that yeah, they do that. And the reason why is because they don't know how to eat them properly. Like, dude, a good wing, you can just grab the bone, and you can just literally, like, rip it out a little bit and then just suckle all that meat out of there. It's delicious. Yep. Get all of it. And then you spend a little time on that bone, you know? You spend a little time getting all the meat off. It's delicious. Eventually, you get so good at it that you don't have to spend the time. Yeah, it's quick. It's so you much just... easier to eat wings. You just slip them out, and you're done. And yep. I, I always... Pay the, now they've charged you at Buffalo Wild Wings, but I always pay for 
extra um, flats only. Flats so that, are delicious. Yeah, no, the, the, the little bone, the little drumstick, oh. those are out. Drummies. I'm okay away. with drumsticks. Flat, I do like man, those drums. flats. I do like drums. Those flats are something else, dude. My oh, mouth is watering <laughs> so good, yep. dude. I know. Speaking now of wings. I'm thinking of grannies with dude, burgers. I wish I had some wings now. Me too. Me too. Speaking of wings, though. Wings and burgers. Because when, when I think of wings, I think of spice and hot. Okay. Just really spicy wings. Me and Steve and his brother Dave will be streaming this Thursday the oh, One no. Chip Challenge. Oh, shit. While we're playing. Oh, this is happening. Yeah, while we're playing Mortal Online 2. Because that's what this will land it on. Um. So it's gonna be wild. We're gonna make our characters, and we're gonna eat the we're gonna eat the chips, and uh, we'll be on camera, and you know we'll see I what happens. I can't wait for that. We'll see what happens. I'm I'm probably gonna die on camera. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, dude, I was I, I, I had it out looking at it. Like I want I want to do it so bad. I'm ready to eat it. Like I'm ready for something to burn me up and spend a couple of hours on the toilet regretting my decision. I can't wait. Make sure you're wearing a rubber glove. You do not yes. want to be yeah. gaming after you eat that chip. Yes. It greases your controller, and you rub it in your eye, and you're fucking done. It's a good point. You just wear a glove. Yeah. Wear yeah. a glove. I will. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make sure everybody does. Cause... So I guess that's a great uh, little point. Uh, so the uh, MMO Tourist has moved to Thursday nights now. Yes. Thursday evenings. Uh, 4 p.m. Is that uh, Central? Is that right? I Central? think that's what time we're doing it. 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, yeah four, four, no, 4 p.m. East. Or is it 5 p.m. Eastern time? Um, uh -oh. Just Last fucking be ready for it on Thursday. Last time we did it at 4 p.m. Okay. Eastern time. Yeah, we can start earlier, though, if everybody else is ready. But I think that was I mean, what 5 p.m. It would actually be a little better for okay, me. Okay, let's do that. But, Wait, 5 p.m. Right, cool. Central or Eastern? Eastern. Okay, well, I don't know that's, if that's perfect. Too close no, that's perfect. That's 4 p.m. my time. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, that's perfect. If you're not there at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central Time, you can just go play a mage. You might as well. You might as well. <laughs> a frost mage, too. Oh, the worst. A frost mage. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, uh, I oh, one last thing. This okay. is it. This is, All right. it's, it's late. I got to work tomorrow morning, but I have one thing that I have to talk about because we skipped it last week. Okay. I wanted to talk about Steven's story where he's his eyeball popped out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. So, you thought I so forgot. I tell my side of the story a lot on the channel. All right? It comes up a lot. <laughs> but never have you guys heard Steve's, because, you know, he was the one that the eyeball popped out. I was just the guy who was like, oh, I guess he fell asleep. Uh, so, Steve, let's hear, let's hear your side of the story. Well, um... Uh... So it was a pretty long time ago now, and I, I don't ever tell this story ever to anybody, so I, I may have forgotten some of the exact details. But from what I remember, I, uh, it seemed like we were doing this thing where we were <laughs> we were like all gathering together and like bringing our TVs over and stuff and playing Final Fantasy XI all together in the same house. Yep. And uh, we were playing, like, there was some kind of situation where, like, Seemed like our girlfriends were gone yep. or something. Yeah, and they went on a trip together. Yep. Yeah, we were going like for. Uh, we were like playing non-stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then it got to a point where everybody went home, and we were <laughs> then we were kept playing at home too, right? And I'm pretty sure that. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> It's the time he just wants to block out of his memory forever. <laughs> it's not a good memory for him. Did, did I? Did I? Did, was, when you first saw me like that, was it? Was it when I showed up at work? Yeah. With the iPad yeah, time? I didn't okay, even know. So, yeah. So I went in the bathroom, and uh, it wasn't that my eyeball popped actually out of my head. Right. It was like the blood vessels in my eyeball exploded, and there was blood like. <laughs> Jeez, that's hardcore. And uh, so gross. So I did like, go get that taken care of. I went to work the next day, and they're like, "Oh my god, what happened?" I was like, "Did my eyeball ex exploded playing Final Fantasy XI?" I mean, it's not really that crazy of a story, I guess. It is crazy, I guess. I don't, I don't know. If ever there was a game that would cause your eyeballs to explode, would be Final Fantasy XI. Yeah, especially back then, dude. And I want to so, mention so that legendary. I have a theory about why that happened to him. So he was playing on one of those old... This is back in the day, right? Um, if there was HDTVs, we didn't have one. I don't think there was yet. Um, 
He's putting on one of the old big screen TVs. You know what I'm talking about? The projection, it's like kind of dark. Two TVs? Yeah, you couldn't see. Like, it was a big TV, but you couldn't you couldn't see and read very well because it was like backlit. It was just Oh, weird. it was was a, a, an actual like reverse projector yes. in, all in the box TV? Yeah, it was yeah. one of those old big screen projector TV yeah. things. Yeah. So you can imagine him trying to read chat and like do all the things that you got to do in an MMO on one of those screens for three days straight. Now, when I, we had rules, too. Like, we we had to eat uh, food that came to us so we didn't lose any time gaming. Uh, we were only allowed, like, so many bathroom breaks a day uh, so that we would not interrupt the the gaming session. Um, and Dude, somebody was in the house with me when it happened, I remember. Somebody was in the house. It wasn't me. I were, went back and, home. and they were like, I don't... Maybe it was Dave, Might have been. maybe, or something. Because I remember that... I remember somebody... And for, in, in my memory, for some reason, I thought it was you, but I bet it was Dave. But I remember that they were like, uh, dude, what's wrong with your eye? And that's when I went to the bathroom and was like, holy crap. Yeah. It wasn't me because I was playing with you, but I was back home. Didn't I type something to you, maybe? No. I don't remember. Well, you might have said something, but I didn't. I thought you just fell asleep because it was just like I heard a. Oh, because I then, disappeared. Yeah, okay. and then I never heard from you. I was like, oh, well, I'll just go sleep. You know, we played enough. And then you didn't come to work. You were late to work. And everybody's like, where's Steve? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I, I don't know. Nathan, what's the worst injury you've ever suffered? Or Ever? from gaming? <laughs> or from gaming. I don't know if I have uh, Just in general. <laughs> <I don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, here's the worst for me. Um, I've broken my, both my knees twice, by the way. Um, I have no ACL in either knee. I have the worst knees, maybe, of any living human alive. But the worst one was when uh, I worked at a... Um, I, ran, I don't even know what to call it. I, I worked at a scrapyard, and I ran the machine... That crushes, uh, 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 that crush the cars, right? Oh, yeah. It's a super sweet gig. Because um, all you do is it's like one lever. You crush it. That's it. That's your job. They bring it. They stack it. it. The you just crush it. You crush it all day, every day. Well, I was doing that, but it, it was raining, and we were starting not getting any hours, right? So the boss said, well, why don't you just come back to the um, uh, to the yard where we do the recycling, et cetera, and, you know, just help unload trucks. And we're like, cool, we'll get some hours, get some money. So we went to go do that. And I didn't realize, because nobody told me I was never working there. The guy that was we were working with was deaf. And I had no idea of that, right? We're just unloading stuff together, you know, we're doing our thing. Well, I picked up one end of this um, uh, treadmill. And he grabbed the other end. But he was on the he was off the truck. And I was on the truck, right? So I'm walking with it. And I, I was saying, like, yeah, give me a second, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hop down. And so I'm, like, holding the treadmill, stepping off this it was a pretty big flatbed truck, and he just throws it while I'm holding it, right? And I'm, like, mid getting down, so I just fly with this treadmill, right? I just fly through the air, and <laughs> I land right on, like, a bar on it, right on my knee, right? And it just absolutely just demolishes my kneecap. Um, oh man! And and what's funny is you know it was a bunch of like, you know like uh, construction type people that work there, and they're like, just walk it off, just walk it off, you're fine. I was like, I'm telling you, it's freaking broke. My knee is broke. They're like, oh, it's not broke. You'll be fine. Just walk it off. I was like, <laughs> but yeah, it was broke. Rub some dirt in it. It was super broke. Um, when when I found. I remember when that happened. Yeah, and, and that ended that career because they were like, well, you can come back, you can crush cans. I was like, I'm not crushing cans. I was crushing cars. That was cool. Now I'm not going to come back in with a can crusher. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and then that's when I moved to Asheville and I uh, got a job with Steve. And for some reason, we ended up, which for that, for our, for our maturity level, the fact that we worked in a nursing home serving food. <laughs> It was so uh, and they not let me be in charge. That yeah. would be the main Steve, person in charge. Steve was in so charge. Like, we we did some we we did some things because um, there was desperate like desperate times call for desperate measures. We didn't do nothing <laughs> mean to old people, right? No, no. But there was like some young kids that worked there, right? And like, dude, not we, not young, 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 like high school kids, like high school kids, yeah. But like we, we, we keep played in mind, a lot this of time we were only we were barely we were barely out of high school ourselves, but we were just out of high school. We played some mean jokes on those poor kids. Yeah, we did. But it was still hilarious. <laughs> did you swipe some dentures? No, <laughs> no we did nothing bad to the... against the yeah, old people. We liked the old people. That's they good. were nice. That's good. 
Like we would do great, like just for a tiny, small glimpse into the kind of stuff we would do. We, me and Nathan would like hide behind this huge oven mm-hmm. while all these kids were in a dish pit, right? And when they were in the dish pit, there was like three stations, right? And they would all have their backs <laughs> turned to each other while they were working their station. So we'd like do something like take a walnut and throw it as hard as we can at the back of one of their heads, and they'd turn around to the other one and be like, "Dude, stop throwing stuff at me!" And the person would be like, "Dude, I didn't throw anything, but it was really just us the whole time, like throwing oranges and <laughs> we, whatever." We purposely. Or we secretly. purposefully like, <laughs> he's making this sound less as bad as it was we purposefully were throwing at the guy we knew had an anger issue and as soon as he like exploded and was ready to fight the other guy that he thought he was throwing it at we we came out as the boss and was like hey now everybody needs to calm down what is wrong with you guys <laughs> like we reprimanded them after we were the ones that caused the issue yeah that's how bored we were i guess in reality <laughs> yeah so that's the worst idle hands ever. right yeah <laughs> I don't hands. All right, boys. Got to wrap this one up. Nathan, yep. take her home. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for joining me for another beautiful night of Cringe Point TV Episode 4. We'll be back next week with Episode 5. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to restart the episode now for anybody that maybe came in late or didn't get to see the whole thing. And it replays through one time, one more time, and then it will be up on the channel for people to view later. Thank you all so much. And um, thank you, Dime Lose. Thank you, Steve, for coming on the show. Uh, and and doing the after party with me and um, thank all of you for the wonderful support. Uh, it's pretty cool to get to do this and um, uh, when I'm doing these you guys. weird things now, I can say I, it's part of my job and that's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> so goodbye, all. Have a great night. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Bye bye. And here we go. We're gonna cringe one. More-